So I work at the Viral Genomics Group here at the Broad Institute, and we are interested in um, sequencing viruses, and one of our main focus is RNA viruses. And so we use um, RNA-seq for that purpose, and we're interested in the viral evolution, fitness, and transmission of RNA viruses um, from various different types of samples and around the world. So our viruses are West Nile virus, um, respiratory syncytia virus, HIV is something we've worked on in the past, hepatitis C, um, and dengue. Um, some of the biggest challenges are um, the amount of viral RNA that we have in these samples. Um, they can be collected from all over the world in many different places. Um, some are collected during peak viremia, others are collected you know, when, when sample is available. Um, so there's a large amount of variability in the viral input. There's large amounts of host contamination in these samples. These samples are processed f at often times um, from various sites and can have uh, de uh, degradation issues. Um, these are very small viruses. They're only about 10 to 15 kb in length. So you, the amount of material um, that's actual virus in the sample can be very, very low compared to an entire human genome. So we're talking things that are, um, you know, sub-femtogram or femtogram amounts of viral RNA. Um, it's about a thousand-fold less than picogram. So we're, we're, we're most likely in the femtogram range or less for our samples as of viral RNA, so femtograms of viral RNA with large amounts of host contamination. So for West Nile, we could have a mosquito sample that could be the host. We could have a, a bird or a mouse from a, a, a lab experiment. Um, and for um, other viruses like uh, respiratory syncytia virus, those are collected from patients, direct clinical samples, so those would have lots of human contamination. Most of our viral sa samples previously were sequenced using um, viral-specific RT-PCR assays, and that would work for, you know, a significant amount of samples, but we routinely had samples that would fail the, the RT-PCR, and so we started to explore alternate methods for, ca for capturing these samples, whether it be due to viral integrity, integrity of the viral RNA, or if it was due to um, low amounts of input. So we started to examine um, other methods, in particular RNA amplification methods. So we tested a variety of different amplification methods, and um, one of the uh, kits from NuGen gave us um, the lowest amount of host um, material and the most viral material, which is what we wanted. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so we had to isolate the RNA differently. We had to remove um, the poly-A carrier RNA that's used in most viral RNA extraction kits. So we had to remove all of um, the carrier and have our collaborators or ourselves extract RNA using um, linear acrylamide, a non-nucleic acid carrier. Here at the board, we've, we've developed our own viral-specific assembler that's really uh, capable of using this RNA-seq data and doing de novo assembly of viral genomes with massively parallel deep sequencing. And that's Vicuña, which is a viral, very good at assembling this viral data. It's very low percent viral reads and a large amount of host contamination. And it's also good that viruses are very diverse. Unlike the human genome, there's a lot of diversity in these RNA viruses. They're continually mutating and evolving over time and um, it's very difficult to assemble these diverse viruses, and so Vicuña was developed here at the Bureau to specifically um, assemble diverse viral genomes in the presence of large host contamination. This is a table from um, a paper we recently published, and it contains our um, data on three different viruses, HIV, West Nile, and respiratory syncytia virus. And in this table, we have both um, clone and clinical samples from HIV, West Nile, and RSV. Um, and we have input amounts in tens of thousands down to a few hundred copies of viral RNA. And in this table, we're looking at the percent of reads that align to the viral reference, the percent of ribosomal RNA, the percent of host RNA, we're also looking at the um, percent of the viral coding region that's covered by all contags, 
and then we're looking at the number of genes that are intact for each virus. And you can see that um, with as little as uh, 100 copies of viral RNA, we can capture uh, up to 99% of the viral genome and um, seven to eight of the nine genes for HIV. For West Nile, with 100 copies, we can, with a clone, we can capture the entire coding region in all genes. And for RSV, we have um, a little bit more material. We're in the 1,000, 1,700 copies, and um, we can capture the entire genome for these samples. So here is a figure looking at the coverage across the HIV genome for both clone and clinical samples. And in the top half, we're looking at the different replicates using the Ovation RNA-Seq kit um, shaded in two different shades of blue. And you can see that both Replicate 1 and Replicate 2 are very similar in their coverage across the um, entire HIV genome um, for both clones and clinical samples. And in the bottom half, we're comparing um, version 1 and version 2 of the Ovation RNA-Seq with the same samples and looking at the evenness of coverage. And you can see that the um, version 2, which is shaded in blue, has more even coverage than the version 1 system. And in uh, table 2, we're comparing um, the technical replicate assemblies for um, HIV and West Nile samples to see if the uh, assemblies are reproducible in the method. And you can see that even with 100 copies of HIV clinical RNA, um, the samples are about 99% identical. And for West Nile, they're about 100% identical. And in Table 3, we are comparing um, the Ovation RNA-Seq Illumina data with our standard RT-PCR um, 454 assemblies for HIV clinical samples and clones. And you can see that um, the assemblies are very similar. Uh, the Ovation RNA-Seq is 99.4% similar to the RT-PCR assembly for a clinical sample, and the NL43 clones are 100% similar. I think something that's still an issue for us is, you know, degraded samples, samples that are, that are severely degraded or samples that are very low. So we've had success with, you know, 100 or so copies, but when you get below that, it becomes very difficult. And I don't know if it's just that there's almost no RNA, very little RNA present, just the amount of RNA is just very low, or if it's, um, if there's some way we can approve it. So degraded samples and extremely low, less than 100 copies of viral RNA have still continued to be very difficult for us. Mm -hmm.